What's going on guys and welcome to the next Crack a Pack episode. Today we are opening up a pack of Rivals of Ixalan. Obviously a new set from just this year, but there's still a lot of awesome cards in here. So I'm hoping that we pull something really great. Uh, as always, we're gonna look at this from a pack one, pick one scenario. So we'll do the best we can to figure out what our pack one, pick one would be if we were drafting this set. Uh, I did draft this set a decent amount, so I'm hoping that we get something good and that I don't uh, pick anything too incorrect, but we'll do the best we can. Our first card here is Sailor of Means. It's a 1-4 for 2 and a blue. It is a human pirate. Pirates are a actual tribe in this set, just to clarify. Um, when it enters the battlefield, create a colorless creature to or treasure token, excuse me, uh, with tap, sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. There was actually sort of an all color deck that obviously required cards like these that you could sort of spit out all these little treasure tokens. That's not a reason to take this. Uh, it's just a, sort of an enabler for that deck. So I do like this card. It's not terrible, but it's not a card I'm looking to first pick. Uh, Frilled Death Spitter is a 3 2 for 2 and a red. Uh, Dinosaur, which again is another tribe, and it has Enrage. Uh, so whenever it's still damage, it deals 2 damage to target opponent. Uh, this is a really, really good card in like a Boros aggro dinosaur style deck. Uh, obviously dealing an extra two damage is great. Uh, even if this trades off with something or something like that, it's going to hopefully get through for some damage. So I actually really like this card so far, obviously between the two, this is the pick. Uh, but it's not by any means a like reason to be Boros aggro. It's just a really, really solid card on the three drop slot. Uh, Divine Verdict, instant for three and a white, destroy target attacking or blocking creature. Uh, this is obviously just decent removal in white. It's a little expensive, but it is instant speed, which is worthwhile mentioning. Uh, it does only affect attacking or blocking creatures, so sometimes this is like not the best removal. If there's a board stall position, this card is just going to be dead in your hand most of the time. Uh, but it does get rid of some evasive threat or something along those lines, so I do like this card. I think I'd still take the Death Spitter over it, but I do like it. Uh, Gil Guilt Grove Stalker, my apologies on the pronunciation, uh, it's a 2-1 one for 1 and a green, it is a merfolk, uh, blue-green merfolk is a tribe as well. Uh, it can't be blocked by creature, creatures with power 2 or less. Uh, not a huge fan of this card, it's fine, it's okay in the early game, but it just gets outpowered so easily that it's really not worth uh, too much of a high pick, I don't think. Uh, Dinosaur Hunter is t a 2-2 two -two for one and a black. Uh, human Pirate, when it deals damage to a dinosaur, destroy that creature. This is sort of like selective death touch, uh, if that makes any sense. Uh, it's a bear other than that, so it's a bear with a little bit of upside. I'm not a huge fan of this card. Uh, I think it's fine, but it's not really a great flagship card for the pirate deck by any means. Uh, Gleaming Barrier is a 0-4 uh, two-cast artifact wall. Uh, with Defender, and when it dies, create a colorless artifact uh, treasure token with Sacrifice it, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Again, sort of an enabler for that uh, all color deck. Not a huge fan of this card though, generally speaking, walls are just kind of meh in draft. Uh, they can slow down the game, which is fine, again, in an all color deck that might actually be what you want to do. But in general, they're just really powerless. They don't do very much. They're not uh, proactive cards so much as they're defensive, just sort of game stall cards. Uh, Strider Harness is a 3-cast artifact equipment. Uh, the equipped creature gets plus 1, plus 1, and has haste, and the equip cost is actually only 1, which is good. Uh, this is sort of like filler, uh, just curve filler. It doesn't really interact specifically with any tribes, so it's great for any of the decks. Uh, but if you're kind of low on 3-drops and you've got a high number of creatures, a card like this is something that you'll probably play. It's not an amazing card by any means, but it's definitely not bad either. Uh, Jungleborn Pioneer is 2 and a green for a 2-2 two, 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 two Merfolk Scout. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one blue Merfolk Creature Token with Hexproof. Uh, to me, this beats out the Death Spitter. It's a 2-for-1 always. Uh, should leave it here. It's a 2-for-1 always, and it also has Hexproof on the 1-1 one, one token, which means it's going to be really, really difficult to actually get rid of uh, late games. So even though it is just a 1-1, one, one, Ideally, in the Merfolk deck, you're going to be able to pump it up and do a lot more damage and hopefully get in with some evasive sort of combat tricks, those sorts of things. Uh, so I really like this card quite a lot. Uh, Gruesome Fate is two and a black for a sorcery. Each opponent loses one life for each creature you control. I'm not really a fan of this card. Uh, this is really probably mostly for the Pirates deck, uh, just because it's sort of the go-wide black deck, uh, if that makes sense. That being said, vampires would also be great for it. Uh, they also kind of go wide with all the tokens and things like that. 
So really either one, I guess it, it's fine, but it's like really not great. Uh, it's very uninteresting in terms of a actual card for draft. Uh, a Our first uncommon, uh, C red, one and a red for an enchant creature. Uh, the enchan enchanted creature gets plus one, or plus two, plus one, excuse me, and has first strike. At the beginning of your end step, if you didn't attack with a creature this turn, sacrifice C red. Uh, this is not great, I don't think. I mean, there are certainly instances where you would want a card like this. It's pretty powerful, honestly, uh, and it definitely encourages you to be very, very aggro. So if you're in a very aggro style deck, maybe the Pirates deck would be best for this. Uh, but in general, this isn't the kind of card that I would want to pick up. Uh, Enter the Unknown is a sorcery for one green. Target creature you control explores. Uh, which means it reveals the top card of your library. Put that card into your hand if it's a land. Otherwise, put a plus one, plus one counter on the creature, then put the card back on top, or put it into your graveyard. You actually get to pick. So it kind of cycles through your deck a little bit. And then you also get to play an additional land this turn. Uh, I actually really like this card in general, not for draft, though. Uh, it's an interesting card for sure. I think it's, it's a lot of ability for one green, uh, which I think is really exciting, but... In general, not good in draft, it just doesn't do enough. Uh, Thrashing Brontodon is 1 and 2 green for a 3-4 dinosaur. You can pay 1 and sacrifice it to destroy target artifact or enchantment. This card is fantastic, it's a perfect 3 drop card for the dinosaur deck in Naya Dinos or uh, green white dinos or green red dinos, any of them. Uh, this card is fantastic, it's a little bit more powerful than like a 3-3 three, three for 3, so it's a little bit better in that regard and it gives you incidental upside against artifacts or enchantments, which there are definitely some in here, so absolutely a fantastic card. I love it. Uh, not necessarily more than the Pioneer, though. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> uh, Kumena, Tyrant of Arazka, uh, is a 2-4 for one, a green, and a blue. It's a legendary Merfolk Shaman. Tap another uh, untapped Merfolk you control, and it can't be blocked this turn. Uh, tap three untapped Merfolk you control to draw a card, or tap five. Uh, to put a plus one plus one counter on each merfolk you control. This is absolutely the reason to be in merfolk uh, Hugely hugely powerful obviously gives you a lot of incidental effects that you can use throughout the game all of which are pretty relevant uh, So I really like this card. It's just very clearly the best card in the pack. Unfortunately, the rest of the pack is pretty weak uh, So not too exciting. We did get a foil here uh, Mausoleum Harpy is a 3-3 for 4 and a black it has flying as well as ascend, so if you control 10 or more permanents, you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game. Uh, and whenever another creature you control dies, if you have the city's blessing, you put a plus one, plus one counter on the harpy. I actually like this card as well, I think it's perfectly fine. But very, very clear, uh, Kumana, Tyrant of Ar Arazka, excuse me, I might be mispronouncing all of these things, but absolutely a fantastic card, definitely the pick in my opinion. Uh, please let me know if you enjoyed this video down below by either leaving a like or a comment and of course make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. I will see you guys in the next Crack a Pack video.